Good morning. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark. This is Scabber Backpacking. Once again, we're back out hitting the trail. So it is a week later. Uh, so last week, I parked actually right over there, hit the trail right here, and headed south. I uh, did uh, 28 miles during that weekend. So 14 miles of the AT that way, and then 14 miles of the AT back to this parking lot. This is Culver's Gap. Today, we're parked here but we're heading north. And we're not gonna do quite as many miles this weekend uh, because I have new footwear. So I've got the Keen Revel 4 Polar Mids. And, you know, I tried on a bunch of different boots yesterday, I tried on a bunch of different shoes, ended up going with these. And one of the things that they talk about is that snowflake rating of them, which means that it has uh, grip in the slipperiest of conditions. Well, right now, I don't know if you can tell, but this parking lot, this parking lot is completely covered in ice. I mean, a complete sheet of ice down here. And if you put the, like the toe of the boot on the ground, it's just super, super slippery. Like I could put no weight on that. But when I put the sole actually on the ground, it's got a ton of grip. Like, yeah, it still slips a little bit, but I mean, I can walk walk around here, no problem. And I'm not, I'm not worried about slipping and falling. So we're gonna get them out on the trail today. And um, reason we're not doing too many miles is that, well, new shoes, gotta break them in. I wore them all around the house yesterday, um, but today we're getting out. There was about four to six inches of snow that fell up here, but then it rained quite a bit yesterday. So I don't know how much snow is actually left on the trail. Uh, and how much ice there's going to be. So let's go hit the trail. It's going to be fun, fun weekend. Let's go. So just as a reminder of what country we're in right here, check this out. This is a pretty big uh, bear prints right there. Coming right across the trail right here. Pretty awesome. So we are supposed to have an absolutely beautiful weekend out here. You can see the sun's already out out there, just on this side of this mountain. I haven't quite hit the sun yet. So I have brought uh, different clothes than I did last week. Of course, the new boots. Definitely, so far, keeping my feet nice and warm. Uh, they're comfortable, but they're definitely, I can feel that they're heavier than what I normally wear. They're, they're heavier than the normal trail, trail runners that I'm in. Um, but. This weekend, I am, um, the weather's supposed to be colder. Even though it's beautiful, it's gonna be colder. Uh, I am wearing additional layers. I've got my uh, Patagonia Capoline underneath this, uh, top and bottom. I've got my knee sleeves on, just to kind of keep keep the knees feeling feeling good. Uh, and then I brought, uh, you can see the, the jacket on the top. That is one of the Columbia Out Dry uh, Puffies and I brought an extra layer of stuff. I uh, brought mittens, brought a balaclava. So I've got additional warmth to make sure that I'm nice and comfortable out here, uh, especially since I'm not planning on hiking quite as long. I'll be at camp longer, which gives you more chance to be, you know, cooling down and, and cooling off. Lots of, uh, lots of cool animal tracks around, so definitely keeping track of those as I'm, I'm walking. So far, it's been all uphill, and just like I start, started off last weekend, just making sure that I'm regulating my temperature, not getting too hot. If I start getting too hot, the hat comes off, because that's the easiest way to regulate.
Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure right here we've got small cat prints. The reason I say that is that there are no, no marks from claws. And cats can retract their claws, dogs can't. So, I mean, it's not huge, but looks like a cat going right up the trail. So funny enough, this is not actually the trip that I had planned for this weekend. I originally was going to go up into New York, up into the Catskills. Really cool trail up there called the Escarpment Trail that I really want to do. It's got some great overlooks, some great lakes, just a really, really cool looking trail. But uh, the snow we got here is nothing compared to that specific area. Um, when I was looking two days ago, it was saying like 22 inches of snow in 48 hours. The, uh, what ended up happening was about 18 inches in about 24 hours. So it dumped some serious snow in that area. And uh, you know, just getting back into the winter swing of things, just getting a new pair of boots, not having gaiters yet, not having a ton of um, recent experience in these types of environments i figured it was better to uh ease myself into it so that's what we're doing back out here on the at having a great time weather's beautiful just enough snow on the ground to to make it really cool um i'm loving it i am really enjoying being out here today so uh thanks for coming along Right now we are coming up to Sunrise Mountain Pavilion, just a little ways up here. But the, uh, you can see the clouds behind me. Sun has gone away. It's kind of weird. I don't know if you can tell, but where it's meeting the, where the, uh, there's a gap between the clouds and the horizon. It's almost like orangish, almost like it's sunset right now. Um, but we are a long way from sunset. Kind of cool. I'll turn you around and show you what we've got coming up. It's got this pavilion up here. Kind of interesting. I'll throw my hat back on because it's a little bit chilly with the wind up here. Man, it is beautiful though. What do you guys think of that? Pretty cool uh, view out that way. A 
look at this place. I mean, the workmanship in here is pretty outstanding. And for where it is, I mean, it's, it's up here. Last weekend when I was out, I feel like I pushed a little bit too hard and a little bit too far before I stopped to have lunch. And so today I'm not gonna make that, that mistake. Uh, probably would have been a, a great spot to do it up at Sunrise Mountain there at the pavilion, but the wind was, was coming through there pretty strong um, and it was just very, very cold. So what I will do is find a spot somewhere up here um, now that we're down in a little bit that's blocked from the wind, uh, I'll get my sit pad out, throw my jacket on, and get some water on, and uh, figure out what we're going to do for, for lunch. I've got a few different options, probably do up a cup of coffee too. It sounds really good. So, all right, let's, uh, let's go find a spot. So I found this spot right here, right along all these rocks, I thought looked perfect for doing lunch. So I've kind of stomped out a little spot here for the stove, nice flat spot. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get things going. It is beautiful out here today. So I brought the bigger pot with me, the Tokes 700. It's got the long handles, which I like, and also it allows me the chance to do it one time where I can do enough water for lunch and enough water to also at the same time have some coffee. So this weekend, we're not doing any fancy coffee. It's gonna be some G7, just some instant stuff. Tastes good, gives me a little caffeine, and it's warm. So we'll, uh, let this do its thing. And when we've got a pot boiling, we'll get this thing going. Oh, what we're doing for lunch, one of my all time favorites. It is the outdoor pantry bison chili. This, one of the best out there. Now there are a couple that I normally do for lunches that are a little bit smaller, but this one here is one of their smaller chilies, but it is the best tasting chili I've had from anyone. It rivals homemade chili for sure. And the stuff is so good. Hitting the spot right now, warming my belly. And definitely gonna give me the energy to keep on. Now this is one of their smaller ones. Like I mentioned, it's pretty good for a lunch. It's only uh, just shy of 400 calories and 24 grams of protein. So good afternoon, lunch, time snack to give you the energy to keep going for the rest of the day. So I'm gonna finish up my coffee and then get back on the trail. Um, you know, take some time to finish my coffee so that I didn't just eat and I'm gonna run. Now, the one thing I will say is that it's extremely tempting with as cold as it is and as windy as it is to leave this jacket on when I start hiking, but that's the last thing you want to do. You probably only find yourself less than a quarter mile down the trail before you need to take it off. And if you're anything like me, you don't like to stop. And so you end up sweating in it and it ends up being compromised. Um, so just like, like with most outdoor activities, start off cold. So I'm gonna peel this off and be back to what I was wearing, knowing that I was perfectly fine in those clothes while I was hiking. I will be cold when I start, but as I keep going, you know, it's, it's hard work walking through snow. So I'll warm up. Make sure that's what you guys are doing too. Don't, don't bundle up to the point where you're warm sitting and think that that's okay to hike in because it's, it's not. You're gonna get, you're gonna sweat and that puts you in, uh, a situation where you're really at risk for hypothermia and that's one of the things you can't afford to do out here. I just came to this little stream right here and I think that this may be the last water source before the next shelter which may be still a couple of miles away. I'm not exactly sure. 
uh, but I know that the shelter, the next shelter has no water. I'm gonna get there and decide what I'm doing for the remainder of the day, but just in case that's where I wanna stay, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up on water here. Uh, I've had my, my filter inside uh, the pack staying, staying warm, so it's been protected. I'm gonna grab some water, filter it up right here. Water coming out of there is pretty orange, so uh, we'll see how it tastes, but yep, we're gonna get this filtered up. Very cool area in here. So it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a sunny day today with no chance of any precipitation and it's snowing now. So we'll see, we'll see how this plays out. I've been watching the dark clouds roll in. It's been getting darker. And so I was curious, I was curious to see if this is what was gonna happen. Okay, so I've made it to this shelter. Um, I think this is probably where I'm gonna end up staying the night. Just don't wanna push it. You know, it's, it's late enough that I could get here, kinda get settled in and things will be good. Um, you know, it's about, somewhere between nine and 10 miles that I've done for the day. It is uh, snowing lightly right now. And uh, you know, I'm here. I'm not gonna sleep in the shelter. I'm actually gonna set up a tent. So I'm gonna scout around and see a good spot for that. But for right now, I'm gonna take the pack off, throw the jacket on, and make sure I stay warm. As you can see, there is a fairly decent amount of snow out here. All right, so for the past, I don't know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I've had to have the GoPro uh, on the charger and in my pocket because I did a whole spiel down there talking about the tent, talking about what I had done and nothing. So let's go walk back over to where the tent is and talk a little bit. Okay, so you can probably see the shelter back there. Not too far away. Over there is the where the bear boxes are. And then right here uh, is my setup. So like I was saying before, I've got this ground cloth that Wahala, Jason Flowers had sent me for Christmas probably, I don't know, maybe three years ago, four years ago. Um, but it's got Spagiver embroidered into it, really cool. Then I've got the rainbow from Tarp Tent set up. Uh, I'd stopped down all of the snow around it, so I've got a nice platform for it. And then inside, I've got the X-Ped. So it's a long wide, it's the Winter UL. Uh, and it is about a seven and a half R value. So it should keep me really warm even on this snow. And then even though it's gonna get down into the low teens tonight, I'm rocking a 20 degree. But this is no normal 20 degree. This is a UGQ 20 degree that is the wide. Uh, it's a long wide version and it's extremely warm. I've had it down to about, about 15 degrees before and been warm. I've got plenty of thermal underwear. Uh, I've got the Capilene stuff I'm wearing. I've got my other stuff in there. Um, I think I'm gonna be okay even with that. And then I brought the Thermarest big pillow. So it's just the, it's like a regular pillow. And so I like that one. Um, that's that's kind of my setup for tonight. I'll let you know in the morning how it goes. Like I said, it's gonna get, it's gonna get cold. Anything that even slightly started to melt today is gonna be a hard froze in the morning. Uh, and so could be slippery getting out of here. So as you guys may have noticed earlier today when I was doing lunch, I did take some advice from people and went with an Nalgene. So I got a, a Nalgene. Uh, also, I was still rocking the alcohol stove. So with the Fancy Feast, it has the uh, fiberglass wicking in there. So even when it's cold, as long as the wicking has fluid in it, has uh, either heat or denatured alcohol, it will burn. And so that's what I'm using. I brought out extra fuel with me. I traded in my little bottle for my bigger bottle and brought that out here. So I've got plenty to do uh, dinner, coffees, plenty of other things. And actually right now I'm gonna do up some, uh, some broth. So it seems like it's about time for that. 
sunsets in about 15 minutes. Uh, on the other side of the shelter, you can kind of see, not right now, but um, start to see some colors. But I'm headed back to the tent to put on another layer because uh, as that sun's going down and that wind is picking up, it is cold. Uh, my food's in the, the bear can right now, or in the, the bear box. I'm just going to go back, change, warm up a little bit, and then uh, we'll do dinner in uh, two hours maybe. So right now I'm just kind of laying here in my, uh, in my, with my quilt on, on this sleeping pad, and man, it's nice and toasty in here. Oh, feels really good, because <laughs> it started getting really cold. Uh, I'm going to turn you around and let you see what it looks like outside right now. So you can see how the sunset is uh, really starting right over here. Kind of cool. So we're doing the venison hunter's pie for dinner tonight. Got the water on right now. So there's an old trick that I learned back in survival school uh, when I was in the military that we're going to try tonight. And it worked back then, and I think I've used it before and it's worked. And that is using snow to keep your bottles from freezing. So uh, what we used to do is stick them in upside down. So, because the threads, uh, you don't want air on the threads. You definitely want it completely submerged in the water. Otherwise, that's the first place it'll freeze. So you stick it in upside down into a snow bank, completely cover it in snow. And the amount of air pockets that are in snow, it acts as an insulator. And so it won't freeze. We're going to give it a try. I'll let you know how it works out. Good morning. So I had a good night's sleep. Uh, ended up getting up. About 2.30, I had to get up and go to the bathroom. And that's where, you know, the differences between hammock and tent, um, you know, one of the big ones is just kind of my organization. You know, while I've got floor space in a, in a tent, it's almost like my gear just threw up and is everywhere here. I feel much more organized, at least... Most of the time, I feel much more organized when I'm doing my hammock system. Also, I think getting up to go to the bathroom is easier in a hammock. Uh, I don't know. Kind of kind of some trade-offs there. You know, if... I, I don't know. We'll talk more about that later. So it's time. It's time to get out of the warmth of this bag and go get some coffee going coffee yes it's a pretty morning with the sunrise coming up behind me it was a chilly chilly night let's go check the water bottle you know because i buried it i marked it right here made sure that you know i could find it oh look at that no frozen. Had I left it out, had I left it out, I guarantee you it would be frozen solid. Uh, it's it's cold, like brutally cold this morning. So I didn't get too cold while I was waiting on my coffee. I started it, then went back over to the tent and worked on tearing stuff down. Coffee's still not ready, so it worked out. I got my uh, my quilt, my sleeping pad deflated, rolled up, put away. Uh, a couple other small things put away. But once I finish up coffee, I'll go get the rest of it picked up, organized, and get the tent itself taken down. Oh, it's chilly. Might need to go grab my mittens. These gloves are starting to feel it all right i'm just about ready to leave you can see the water bottle even though i've been sitting here with it upside down you can see it's definitely starting to freeze so i'm going to leave it in my pack on the outside pocket upside down so that the threads don't freeze so i can actually open it up when i need a drink but 
pack is packed. Just got to get this jacket off. It's the part I've been dreading. Uh, just finished up my coffee. So I'm pretty warm. I'm going to peel off this layer. <sighs> then hit the trail. I already had gotten to the point where I had to stop and take off. I was wearing three layers up top, so I had to take off the middle layer. So I've got my lightweight Capilene on and this Fayette Chill. And uh, this is what I'm gonna rock. I've still got three layers on, on the bottom. Haven't felt like I'm too warm down there yet. So uh, we'll see. May end up stopping and having to strip that off as well. You can see on the trail where I walked yesterday, where other people walked, it is just ice now. And so it's all the way down through like that. But these boots have been doing amazing at grip into this. So here's what's nice. Yes, it's a cold morning. It's extremely chilly out here. But on the positive side, there is no wind at all. There was some wind yesterday up on some of the peaks and it was really cold. Uh, oh, and up on the ridge. But right now, it's just, it's like crisp, clear, no movement at all. It's just, it's a nice chill to the air. Now from here, it's pretty much all downhill back to the car. I did stop at Sunrise Shelter or Sunrise uh, Pavilion and peel off that extra layer. And I also changed my socks. So I started getting a little bit of a hot spot and I think it's because of the socks I was wearing. So I went back to my darn tufts. Things have been better. Plus the snow is definitely uh, not as deep down here as it was further north. And there's been a lot more traffic. So trail's gotten really packed in and it's like hiking on on a packed in dirt trail so it's been pretty quick all right back at the jeep trip is done so i still had problems with the gopro on this trip and i did a couple of things different to try and alleviate that number one i was using my snap mount which is a, uh, a magnetic mount that mounts to the back of the gopro and onto my tripod and so it just snaps on and off and so I was able to when I wasn't actually using it rather than having it on my shoulder strap pull it off throw it into my uh, pocket and the thought was it would keep it warm uh, didn't work so well still got cold still kept shutting off on me this morning the other thing I did was uh, took all my electronics put them in with a koozie and um, put hand warmers in there to keep it warm so as I've swapped out batteries that has worked for a little while but gopro man you gotta fix your crap come on all right guys it was another great weekend i'm glad you guys came along finally got out some good snow you know between two and eight inches depending on where we were along the trail the boots held up well uh still need some breaking in on them i can tell but uh all in all great weekend good trip it was nice to get out Next weekend, I'm flying back to Oklahoma City, spending Christmas and New Year's with the family. So uh, we'll see what I do as far as videos over the next couple of weeks, but stay tuned. Thanks for checking it out, guys. I'll see you down the trail.